good morning. This is a bit of a contrast. Probably should have built in a little bit of time before coming back from honeymoon and going to work. Welcome to another episode of Toby Stupid Vlog. But anyway, here we are. Full colours are upon us and honeymoon is literally over <laughs> and uh, I'm back to work. I'm going into uh, Oval today to do some video work for Webvid and hopefully somewhere along the way I'll realise that um, I'm back in the United Kingdom. I would say that it's good to be back except that it's not really. <laughs> it's nice to be home but being home is slightly different to being back in the United Kingdom which is somewhat of a rudderless egomaniac set adrift in the world. <laughs> And I say that coming from Italy. It's surprising, isn't it? The United Kingdom now looks like it has less political and moral leadership than Italy. <laughs> Who would have thought that would ever be true? Oh. Anyway, being home is quite pleasant. Being back at work, well, ask me again in like a day or two, but probably not quite so exciting. Um, but you know, summer is here until tomorrow. <laughs> and the flowers are still out and the colours are coming it's quite a nice time of year the weather's quite pleasant tomorrow i have mostly at home i've got a couple of meetings in the afternoon and evening and most of the morning is going to be reading board papers but at least I can do that in the comfort of queue and acclimatize a bit after today's sort of deep end therapy um so that's much needed because i also have an away morning on Saturday and then the next two weekends I'm working so it's it's gonna be a little hectic so I'm gonna to have to sort of find moments for a bit of relaxation in between now you say have you just been on two and a half week holiday yes certainly that is true and it was very enjoyable but it's two and a half weeks of city breaks essentially which meant that we walked 250,000 steps and um, it's a change is as good as a rest but sometimes um you need a rest as well uh, so just a little bit of sitting down time i think will be nice so i don't know if i mentioned but i've been learning german for the last 10 and a half months it's a bit of a slow process and uh whilst i was in italy i was obviously brushing up my italian as well so i'm kind of my brain is a little bit sort of all over the place when it comes to languages but I think what we might try and do is one Italian and one German word each week. So you can learn a little bit along too. And if it interests you, then uh, you might think about taking up a language. I would strongly recommend it. It is very good for your brain and it is very pleasurable. Um, albeit, ultimately, you probably end up unnecessary because technology will solve most of the problems. But just still consider it. Not least because there is research that says that anybody who learns at least one other language is significantly less likely to develop Alzheimer's in later life. So there we go, that's a good enough reason, surely. I'm still getting used to my slightly different views. My walk back this evening though, it's, you know, still very impressive. I mean, colours in the sky, colours of the leaves, what have you. So I can't complain too much, except for the massive weight I'm carrying. But aside from that, it's a pretty nice evening. Good morning. I'm off to my spiritual home to read some board papers until lunchtime. Hopefully most of them, seeing as my board meeting is this evening. And I have um, another meeting between now and then. So I'm rather short on time. I've also got to post some negatives that turn out not to be mine back to the film developer. And then hopefully he'll send me mine back. And then we'll be reasonably in sync. At least that's the hope. So today my intention is to not have any Italian food. I thought that was my intention yesterday, but then I found a very nice bean soup <laughs> in an Italian deli. So as I mentioned yesterday morning, I was on my way to Webvid and I spent most of the afternoon filming. And that meant by the time I went to get lunch, it was approaching four o'clock, which is a bit poor on my part. Um, so I went wandering around where the new offices are in Oval left it a bit late couldn't really find anything and then 
I've stumbled across a Sicilian deli. Obviously the temptation at uh, any sort of Italian deli is to have everything that involves meat, but it was a veggie day and the one thing they had in the menu was a classic Tuscan bean soup, uh, which I had failed to have whilst we were in Tuscany. And so I felt compelled to have a very delicious soup, which I did. Um, but it doesn't mean that I was still eating Italian even when I was back. So today we're going to be fully anglicised. I'm going to eat boring sandwiches all day. Almost fell at the first hurdle there. I have just been into cute Italian deli, but <laughs> I have not bought anything Italian. Um, I'm having a quest on a nice tea for breakfast. Keep it simple. Here we are, back in familiar territory. It's actually a very nice first day of autumn. The colours are now acceptable because autumn has commenced. The weather can't change though, I won't be up for that. Come for a little wander down here, largely just to see the stone pine, which is in the centre frame there, which is very much like the ones they have lying in the streets um, by the riverside in Florence. So I'm still living my honeymoon vicariously through plants. <laughs> So that's a bit weird. After having some lunch, I'm back in Teddington for my first of all chair liaison meeting. And secondarily, with a two hour gap, a co-op homes board meeting. And uh, then, then I'm done for the day. But when I say then, I mean I'm talking about half past nine tonight, probably, maybe 10. I often complain about autumn because, you know, it means that summer's over. Oh, good morning, by the way. But a morning like this morning is just stunning along the Thames. Here, just as the leaves are starting to turn and the light is fighting its way through the mist and reflecting off the water. It's remarkable, it really is. I mean, if autumn was just like this and then we skipped winter, <laughs> even a cockerel I would be very very pleased people who live in hot climates I'm hugely jealous of and they expats and say think they say things like oh I really miss the seasons I used to think they were completely and utterly start raving bonkers frankly like, how could you possibly miss the fact that the United Kingdom is cold most of the time but I'm beginning to understand what they mean. And I think, from my perspective, what I would miss living in a sort of tropical climate is I would miss two seasons. I would miss spring, which is really spectacular in this country. And I'd miss autumn and days like today. I would not miss winter. There's very little about winter that I very much really like. And I wouldn't miss summer because our summers are always slightly disappointing. But those two transitional seasons are amazing. <coughs> so I'm working at Redwood Oval today. There ahead of me on the road is the Oval. One of the most amazing cricket grounds, Surrey's home ground, and today is the last home game of the season for Surrey, and therefore the last home game of one of the greatest batsmen who's ever played played the game, Kumar Sangakara, who's retiring from first-class cricket at the end of the season. We've got one more away game left. He's been slowly retired for years, we've been fair. He um, retired from Test cricket and then won the internationals and now first class cricket. And he'll probably play a little bit of T20 stuff for a year or two. And then he might retire entirely. Um, so people have been sort of getting used to seeing him less and less. Otherwise, I think it'd be quite hard to take, especially as he is, despite being 39, the highest scorer this season in Division 1. So, there we go. It's 
So here we are at the end of the road there, that building with the grey trim is Offley Works, which is where Webvid is now based. We're not very far from the Oval, but it's quite a nice little road actually, housing everywhere else. They probably don't like us so much, but there we go. Good evening, welcome to a very muddy tidal walk back. This is one of the bits of the Thames Path that floods at high tide, which was a few hours ago. Actually, it was less than that. Um, so it's unfortunately muddy, seeing as I'm wearing new trainers. But anyway, there we go, it's all sorted out now. What a lovely evening, isn't it? It's a beautiful morning and it's a beautiful evening. It's also Friday night. This is going to be a very, very short vlog because I need to get back into sync. And so this will be the end of it upon completion, upon my arriving home. So I think I said a couple of days ago that because I'm learning German and sort of revising my Italian, I might do a word of the week in both languages. So why don't we start? Um, then we'll have to go on. <laughs> so I think the most appropriate word of the week right at this moment is evening. Evening. In Italian, evening is la sera. La is the in Italian. It's the female version, L-A. And sera is S-E-R-A. So la sera is the evening in Italian. And you can use that in phrases like buona sera, which means literally good evening. So there we go. That's the Italian bit. Now, in German, evening is Abend. That is der Abend. Der is the in German. It's the masculine article, confusingly, because evening is masculine in German. And Abend is evening, spelled A-B-E-N-D. So D-E-R space A-B-E-N-D is the evening. And that can be used in phrases such as Guten Abend, which literally means good evening. So there we go, you've learned evening in Italian, sera, and German, abend. The last thing I wanted to talk about this evening was Uber. Uber has just been told that they will not be getting a renewal on their license in London. Um, they have five year licenses to operate as a, essentially as a taxi firm. And they've been told that because they, um, they do not pass the test as being fit and proper. Um, I have a few thoughts on this. don't think it's particularly clear-cut one way or the other. So firstly, the reasons that have been given that it's not fit and proper is to do with the way that it treats its customers. They don't believe there's sufficient safety measures in place and they don't believe Uber has done enough to protect customers from potential malicious drivers. Now, I think that's absolute nonsense. Um, there are plenty of legitimate reasons that Uber has moral problems, and this is not one of them. Uber is actually excellent at this. This is one of the things it does particularly well. It tracks all its customers, so it knows where they are at all times when they're on a journey, um, which keeps them quite safe. It knows which driver's been assigned to which rider, um, and it cooperates with the police particularly well on this matter. So I think this is somewhat of a nonsense. However, Uber is not a particularly nice organisation. It's not particularly nice in the way that it treats its employees, actually, not its customers. Both its employees, its permanent employees, which has been quite widely publicised issues, which are more than a bit serious, and um, also the way it treats its drivers, who aren't technically employees, um, but therein lies kind of the problem in terms of benefits and rights and pay. My personal belief, however, is that this technology is transformational. And the reason, the main reason that Uber has lost its license is because the black cab um, unions are a very powerful lobbying body and they did not like this disruption to the market and their fares being dramatically undercut. And so they then worked backwards to work out a reason why it shouldn't have a license. So if the unions feel like this is a massive victory, um, I think they should take a large dose of reality and look at the music industry and maybe think what happened there when they shut down the technology platform that was competing against them, Napster. It doesn't make the problem go away, it only moves it. I think what will happen is 
either Uber or another company that basically does the same thing. Or maybe um, the local government itself, the mayor, what have you, will ultimately have to end up running an organisation that does exactly the same thing. So if you're a black cab driver, don't go celebrating because this is really just delaying the inevitable, which is that black cab fares are too high, I'm afraid. So they might be great drivers and they might have great knowledge, but knowledge of the streets of London is not very useful nowadays when everyone has a sat nav that knows traffic congestion as well. So I think it needs to modernise. And I think this pushback is a little farcical and it does make London look very silly. So there we go, that's all I have to say on the subject. P.S. Uber Eats should theoretically still work as you don't need a licence to deliver food. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for walking along with me whilst I spew complete rubbish as I attempt to adjust to being back in the United Kingdom, something I'm not overly pleased about. Um, I do hope you'll join me next week, it'll be a full week rather than just three days of meandering. I just had to get back in sync. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've watched the Italian vlogs. They are two massive vlogs, so I would take them in bite-sized chunks if I were you. Um, very much enjoyed being there. I hope you got some appreciation from watching along as well. Um, you should be able to find them by clicking the I in the corner of this video. Uh, thanks again. Please subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week. Toby.